Hello again, Konsa. We've done the bow and dual blade runs, they are already up on the channel, and so now we are covering Insect Glaive. This is probably the least impressive of, uh, of all the runs. I wanted to focus on this one a little bit more, but to be honest with you, uh, like I, I had to... It's a bit of a weird one, because while I'm sitting there complaining and bitching to myself about, you know, not getting a 13 or a 12 minute run or whatever, there are a lot of people who main Insect Glaive who are struggling with the fight completely, and so I thought it would be more useful for me to actually like put out some information, show off my playstyle, even though there will be a lot of mistakes, and don't get me wrong, there's going to be bad AI and an absolute ton of mistakes. I'm probably going to spend more time talking about what I shouldn't have done <laughs> as opposed to what I should have. But uh, yeah, so so we're doing it now. Uh, the standard disclaimer applies. I am using Fatalis's weapon, but that doesn't really... Uh, Fatalis's gear, but that doesn't really matter. It just means that the video is a couple of minutes shorter than it would have otherwise been. And we explain exactly how to change the set um, uh, at the end of the video when I, when I show the set and the skills and the decos and stuff. What's more important is the actual playstyle itself. Um, so there's going to be attempts at cone baiting. Uh, I get a little bit unlucky with AI here. This is one of the earlier weapons I tried, and so I wasn't as familiar with the uh, with the AI. In fact, I believe this was the first of the three runs that's gone up recently. This was the first one that I actually recorded. And so here, I'm still working out a lot of Fatalis' AI. Um, and so that's the reason you'll see some some pretty silly mistakes. Uh, th those I, want, I do want to go back and improve this run at one point, at some point. But um, but I want to cover other things first, like TCS Greatsword and, and like a Hunting Horn and, and stuff like that. But uh, anyway, yeah, so uh, we're playing with Insect Glaive. The trick for Insect Glaive is to try and cone bait and then to use the pole vault to get punishes wherever possible. Insect Glaive has a few additional punishes. Uh, it's quite a versatile weapon and I do think it's a really nice matchup for Fatalis, especially if you're struggling with the fight. There are a lot of opportunities to do some good damage to Fatalis using the descending thrust, as is kind of the case with the mo most Insect Glaive matchups, to be honest with you. Um, the punishes I'm doing here are a little bit iffy. For the large bites, you want to like ideally roll and then do an idle. You want to do that basically for the large bite, but not for the small bite. For the small bite, you want to like idle swing or super armor through, or do the uh, advancing slash. This is the opening I was referring to. There are two ways to do it. You either uh, land your attack on the head like I did there. Oh, also I messed up there because I, I forgot that the aerial claw kills your momentum. Yeah, when he's doing the three fireballs, you can time your pogo stick so that you hit it with the with the last fireball. Also, whenever he does this attack, you can basically claw, claw on for a free tenderize. Um, but there's another way to do that. Uh, hopefully the three fireballs will come again soon and I'll show you the other way that I like to punish that move. As you'll notice, still no cones, unfortunately. It's been down on the ground twice, but that's okay. Um, yeah, so you, you roll through and then you get like an advancing slash and sometimes he'll 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 get out of the way quickly, but it's not a big deal. Uh, when he does this move here, uh, it's usually fairly consistent to plan the pogo stick. Unfortunately, I whiff it, I think twice or maybe only once. Okay, yeah, so I get the second one. Um, you can usually land two pogo sticks is what I do. I don't know if it's the optimal punish, but it's a fairly handy one. Um, so here we go, the third fireball. The other way you can do this is you can go for the head and then bring it back and then the slow kinsect drill will pull outwards. Now, actually, I think next time I get a cone, I should talk about the uh, the kinsect drill because I know that's a little bit new for a lot of people. And watch out, you'll notice here, I mess up the kinsect buff. I only get a couple of pierces. I could have gotten more if I'd aimed it properly. Here we go, so the cone. Now watch what happens with the kinsect. I get all of my attacks up and then you'll see a series of 105s. We've got three in that time and you can get four or possibly even more depending on your positioning. That is the Kinsect Drill. If you're not aware, if your Kinsect has been recalled, so for example, um, I hadn't had it recalled in time here, uh, and so I wasn't able to get it off. But yeah, if your Kinsect has, if you've recalled your Kinsect, if it isn't, if it isn't out and in the middle of fighting something, then when you use your Descending Thrust, here it, start, it sets out the Kinsect and the Kinsect will sort of uh, shoot to your position. Um, this is kind of like, I, I, this isn't an Insect Glaive Guide, so you should hopefully know about this by now. But basically, that Kinsect drill is increased, like you get more ticks if you use a slower Kinsect. And so what you'll notice as I'm going for the buffs is that my Kinsect is actually really slow. Also, we're keeping the uh, the head tenderized and uh, and keeping it in rage mode for the extra 10% damage. But uh, yeah, what you'll notice is that my Kinsect is actually really slow and it makes it quite difficult to... Uh, don't forget to buff your Kinsect, by the way. I mean, if you're playing Insect Glaive against Vitalis, you're probably good with the weapon. Also, if you are getting damaged by the Cone Breath because of your positioning and you're pole vaulting over it and you're, thinking, and you're, you're noticing that you're getting... Uh, you're getting damaged by the breath even while you're vaulted into the air. Uh, make sure you have white buff because it increases your range. Uh, and the trick is you need to be as high as physically possible. Um, so don't like jump into the air and vault immediately. Make sure you've reached the peak of your height. I found this out from Khalid uh, Senpai the other day. Um, but uh, yeah, so the Kinsect drill itself works better with a slow Kinsect, but that obviously means that gathering the extract is a bit of a pain. Also, I'm using the standard. Uh, I've, got, I've explained this, this strategy in, in both the previous videos, so I'm just going to let it play. But uh, yeah, so the slow kinsect gives you more points for the drill, but obviously it makes gathering your extracts harder. Your Whether or not you use it is completely up to you. I'll show you the kinsect at the end of the video when I go over the set. But um, just know that you can use whatever kinsect you like, really. Uh, Dragon Element is the go-to for Vitalis, FYI. 
But uh, otherwise, if you want to use a fast Kinsec, use a fast Kinsec. Also, I forgot that I ran out of a uh, white buff here. Uh, and so I didn't go as far forward as I was hoping to. I actually struggled to get white buff here. And this is one of the things. Like, if you're playing well, it shouldn't be an issue for you. But you'll notice that I get kind of screwed by having the slow bug here. Uh, because I, I tried to go for white buff. Like, because it's a triple up gives you an extra 5% damage over red buff. And yet, because the Kintex effect is so slow, I don't have enough time to get it. Uh, and in fact, I just spent so much time faffing around it that I actually mess up this punish a tiny bit. Uh, and also, the fact that I don't have white buff means my pole vault takes less distance. And so again, it's going to make the uh, the punish here a little bit harder to do. You can see how much uh, less distance you traverse there. So you really want to get white buff. And so, yeah, if you're struggling to get the uh, the Kinsex with, with the, uh, the extracts with the slow Kinsex, be sure to change to the fast one. Yeah, so I have heavy artillery on the temporal mantle. That's the reason that uh, that I equip it before going onto the ballista. Here you go. So the this, I mean, this opening has been fairly self-explanatory. You get Fatalis to cone wherever possible. Uh, you vault towards it and then you uh, you punish. Uh, other openings are this triple fireball over here. You jump up after the second one and then boom, you go. Uh, you can delay that a little bit further and you can guarantee that you hit both on the uh, on the head. Uh, mess around with the timings of it. See what's most comfortable for you. That's the timing that I like to go for because of the Kinsec drill, however. There are a few moves that aren't really punishable, but Fatalis, the nice thing about the Insect Glaive matchup is because you have so much uh, uh, horizontal and vertical momentum with the uh, with the descending thrust and the vaulting in the air, you can make most openings into a punish. Um, things like that that backward sweeping breath, for example, you saw me do earlier, um, is, is a really nice punish. And, and even things like in Final Phase, the pin can be really handy. Now, regarding Final Phase, you'll notice that I've only gotten one horn brick so far. If you're struggling with Final Phase one-shotting you, you should probably consider uh, running Part Breaker on the set instead of Peak Performance, and then taking advantage of Part Breaker to break both horns uh, before the uh, before the final phase. It usually is possible before final phase if you focus almost entirely on the head. And you'll notice that is what, is, uh, what I've been doing. I haven't been damaging the chest much. It is better DPS to keep the chest tender uh, keep the chest tenderized as well, and then take advantage of that by uh, by attacking it in certain openings that aren't viable for the head. However, because I like to make sure I get the horn break, I, I, you'll see me do a more sort of cone baiting and, uh, and focusing on the head. Unfortunately, I don't have the head tenderized here, but I decided to go for the damage. Uh, I, there, I don't really have any great advice for punishing the uh, the binder like that. I would probably say don't use the pogo stick unless you're familiar with the Fatalis' head's positioning. Because it is quite difficult to, uh, to land, unfortunately. Also, I'm not sure why I'm using Rocksteady. I should probably be using Evasion Mantle. But uh, yeah, so because we're not running Pipe Breaker, we're, we are like uh, a few hits away, not a few hits away, but we're like a few cones probably, or a few uh, a few head attacks away from uh, getting the second horn break. It can be nice to save the second horn break for final phase, because it gives you such a long opening, but at the same time, you're at so much risk of getting like one shot or whatever, that it's a little bit risky. Uh, don't forget to use your binders. Uh, I like to use the binders early in final phase, specifically because... Uh, uh, specifically because they make it much easier to get the horn break. And as you can see here, uh, I like to have Fatalis' head as close to this wall as possible because it makes punishing it uh, much more consistent. But that can be mitigated by just getting better at the uh, understanding the positioning. Now, we haven't broken both horns yet, so we can't use the dual strategy I used in Dual Blades. Also, I didn't know about the strategy back then. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll explain it to you once we've broken the second horn. You can tank this Nova and use it uh, to set up an opportunity, uh, a bit of an opening. Regarding this run, I'm trying to think of what else I need to say. Uh, there aren't too many sort of uh, extraneous skills that I use. Claw boost is really handy, obviously. Uh, it's really handy for like pretty much all light weapons. Keep your Kinsect buffed at all times. Uh, I'm running the Alatra on arms for power prolonger as well, which is really nice because it means you don't have to grab Kinsects as much. I don't normally run that skill, but because I find it so tedious to get like red extract especially um, on Fatalis' head because of how much it moves, uh, I, I, uh, I've been running it um, as a bit of a convenience thing. Uh, Alatrion's arms are really skill efficient anyway, so it's definitely worth going for. The other thing is, the glaive that I'm using is Spirit and Strength Boost. That's Vitalis' glaive. And a lot of other glaives have it. I believe Lightbreak is too. Uh, Spirit and Strength Boost, if you're not aware, while your Kinsect is buffed, that is the... You can see my red, white, and orange buffs for the player that I get from the Kinsect uh, in the top left of the screen below my sharpness bar. Next to that, there is the little red and orange up symbols. That is the uh, that is the Kinsec buff itself. That's when you hold the the Kinsec trigger and press a triangle and circle together. Uh, while you have that Kinsec buff active, when you get triple up, it lasts uh, a chunk longer. Between power prolonger three and having the uh, the Kinsec buff with the strength and spirit boost glaive, my triple up lasts, I believe, somewhere in the region of three minutes, which is really handy. Also, vaulting randomly tends to cause uh, him to do the snap drag, which is quite nice if you want his head in the air. I have noticed that after that lingering explosion he places on the ground, he does like to cone if you retreat from him. Um, but uh, 
And I haven't I haven't really gotten combating down to a science yet. I do plan on practicing it probably on stream tonight, in fact. Uh, so if you're seeing this video on the day of release, there's a good chance I've gone live just after the video's gone up. Um, I'll probably be practicing maybe Insect Glaive or maybe I'll be doing Hornbrake Strats for people who are struggling with the fight. But whatever, anyway. I don't know why I'm shilling my Twitch in the middle of the fight. So we've gotten both Hornbrakes now. I can just stand where I, where I, start, where I was at the start when he first left to Nova. Uh, heal right before the Nova like does its big move so that I'm at full health so it doesn't kill me. Uh, and then, because I'll be perfectly positioned, you can line up like a, a descending thrust as he, as he flies down and lands. I, I don't go for that here because, as I said, I, I wasn't really aware of the strat. Uh, at the time of recording this video, this is one of the first weapons that I tried after uh, after Frostcraft Great Sword. Uh, if you want to see all of the runs that we took, it didn't take us too many runs to get this, uh, uh, too many attempts to get this run, I don't believe. But if you want to see all of the runs, including sort of all of the faffed runs and all of the mistakes and stuff, uh, then uh, feel free to check out the VOD on Twitch. Um, I don't have the VODs unlisted, I don't have the VODs listed on YouTube, just because, uh, oh yes, I got pinned. Uh, you can get pinned sometimes, it's just what happens when you flinch the chest with a big attack and aren't in a position. You can vault over him when he does this, by the way, because I was sheathing my weapon. Um, no such luck. But uh, yeah, when you get pinned, you can fire dragon pods to uh, stop him. You can see I'm firing one here just to prime him up. Two dragon pods are a guaranteed flinch against Vitalis, and so if you get pinned, um, it is a really nice way to stop yourself from getting completely killed. That said, with both horns broken, a lot of the time it won't finish, finish you off if you have a decent amount of defense. Um, especially if you're running like Divine Blessing 5 or something. But, uh, but still, using those Dragon Pods can be really handy. Also, that attack is bullshit. I hate that so much. Um, regarding his flight, you can Far Caster away to uh, get to force him to land. You can also uh, flinch shot him if he's unenraged like he is now. I'm not entirely sure why I don't do that, to be honest with you. I think I wasn't really paying much attention. Uh, the other thing is, if you end up... Uh, if you claw onto him, he's very likely to... Oh, if you have binders, obviously, obviously use those. If you claw onto the thing, obviously it's free tenderizes. But also, he will often use the move where he lands while you're clawed onto him. Um, it's kind of a win-win situation. Either you get off a free tenderize, uh, or he lands straight away, which is a... Uh, you know, the, you might want one or the other given the circumstances, but either way, at least you're getting something, you know what I mean? Uh, Dragonator is now ready. You've got to keep an eye out for the uh, for the little bits of information on the right. I have no clue how this hitbox works. I want to give you advice on how to, how to not get hit by that. My advice is just stay close to Vitalis, basically. But uh, yeah, we do get a little bit lucky with the Dragonate positioning here, but it doesn't take too long. I wouldn't advise you come up here until you see him doing an attack where he's like on his way to uh, to move to the Dragonator. If he's just standing still minding his business at the back of the map uh, and you go up to the Dragonator area, he will just spam projectiles for days. So I would advise you wait in front of the Dragonator, but not on top of it um, if you want to bait him there. And then as soon as you see him start advancing towards it, it's uh, probably a good opportunity to uh, uh, to try and use it. This move here is a pretty free uh, aerial claw. I was a little bit late on the upkeep, so there was a chance I got punished there for it. But uh, but generally, if you see his head cocked down and then you immediately vault and then vault to uh, pole vault and then dash towards him, you're pretty much guaranteed a, a free tenderize, which is nice. This is the third and final uh, Nova in phase three, so he's at five percent health. Um, just if you weren't aware, that's that's an indication. I probably ruined that for you now because if you get to the third phase, you'll be extra panicked if you're on your last cart. But anyway. Um, yeah, 5% health left, so somewhere in the region of, I think, uh, 3,500, 3,300 health. So only a few pogo sticks, basically, or a few good punishes away from uh, from finishing this thing off. This triple fire breath in the final phase. By the way, I haven't really been talking a huge amount about the openings themselves, because they're fairly self-explanatory. But that triple fireball, if you don't, you know, get unfortunate like I did and, uh, uh, and uh, cause a flinch, uh, that triple fireball is a perfect opportunity to vault towards the chest and then... Uh, use the damn descending thrust. Now, I, I'm a little bit drawn on whether or you should pun punish the uh, the chest or the horns during cons in final phase. Obviously, if you haven't broken the head yet, then go for the head. However, because I had the chest tenderized, um, I decided to go for the chest there, but I do find it's a lot more difficult to consistently hit the hitboxes. Uh, the, the, like the, the chest hitbox itself instead of the legs. So you might want to prefer just uh, prioritizing the, the, the head there. Anyway, I will play the disclaimer now that the, uh, now that the run is over. Hello again, Conte. If you're hearing this, it's because I'm using some Fatalis armor and or like its weapon and I expected a lot of comments along the lines of, oh, I don't have this, how can I, how can I replicate this? And I wanted to answer that and simultaneously give a bit of a disclaimer. 
Primarily, it just doesn't matter. The point of these videos is to show you my playstyle for a given matchup as well as the openings and the way I punish them. Just to run whatever was meta before Fatalis. And if there are any additional skills that I've got on my sets that make the playstyle work, so for example, Evade, Extender, Run, Bow, then obviously just swap those out for some DPS skills. You can drop points of attack, you can drop the Agitator Charm or whatever, anything like that. Just do your best to try and get to 100 affinity with points of critical eye if possible. But even if you aren't able to get that far, it's still completely fine. Secondly, these videos aren't meant for just people struggling on the special assignment. They're also for people who are trying to grind the other weapons for Fatalis that they haven't made yet, or for example, people who are trying to get better at the fight. Thirdly, I already have a bunch of guides put up on how to farm the Vitality set without having to be able to beat it using Plunder Blade and Hornbreak Shots and stuff like that. And I have said many times that the best way to make the fight easier is just to make it set because it's just so powerful. And so this will help with those people too. And lastly, and I know it's a bit of a personal reason, but I like to run the most effective gear as possible so that I can better compare my times to these speedrunners and see how well I'm doing compared to them. I don't really get the time to enjoy video games the way I like to anymore between editing videos for you guys, my full-time job, and streaming at twitch.tv slash away. However, one thing I really do enjoy doing is pushing my hunt times down as low as possible. So I hope you'll understand why I take the opportunity to do that, even if it means I have to run Fatalis gear on these quests. So here is the set. It might be slightly different from the one on video because I did tinker with the set a tiny bit, but I think it's mostly the same. Um, the notable skills here, and I just want to clarify again, the disclaimer did play, but basically don't worry if you don't have the Vitalis set, it's really fine. Uh, what's most important are like a few key skills that make the set work and the rest are just DPS. Uh, so yeah, run your preferred uh, run your preferred Insect Glaive set. I, I don't know what you used to run, maybe 3 TO, 2 Raging Bracky, whatever your preferred raw Insect Glaive set is. You probably don't want to go for like a dragon oriented build, although it probably could work. Um, but uh, yeah, so so just run your preferred uh, your preferred insect glaive build. There are so many of them; they're, they're very they're very typical. They're not particularly complicated. Three to is and and two raging brecky is often uh, uh, the the set of choice. Also, if you have two pieces of uh, if you have the the waist and the legs, if you've been following my plunder blade guide for fatalis, then you can run three to two fatalis or three sappy two fatalis or whatever you feel like. It's really not a big deal. Anyway, anyway, uh, as far as the important skills on the set go. Uh, we have the three points of power prolonger that come from uh, the Escador arms. They're not important, but they are kind of nice. It's really up to you. Um, and we'll show you the Kinsek in just a second. But uh, yeah, so the three points of power prolonger are kind of like a, a unique skill. In terms of important skills themselves, I would definitely recommend running Airborne. You can see I have the uh, the Airborne decoration here, jumping power plus 30%. It doesn't work for the entire downward thrust, but it does work for like one or two of the hits. And because we spam it so much, it's really handy to use. Um, other skills, if I like a single point of evade extender at least, but your mileage may vary. It, I, I feel like it makes me more able to consistently dodge some of the like lingering uh, explosions that it lands on the floor if if you don't happen to get lucky. Um, and a point of clutch claw boost, boost is obviously really handy. Uh, if you don't like tenderizing with insect glaive, we do a lot of tenderizing this fight. Uh, the head and the chest, and so it's really nice to have, uh, to have claw boost. The two points of heavy artillery and the temporal mantle are specifically for that strat that I showed you in the run. Um, and other than that, there aren't any sort of notable, you know, skills that make the, the set work. It's just a case of stacking as much affinity and DPS as possible. So because I'm using true Fatalis, because uh, I'm using the Fatalis Insect Glaive, which comes with a, a pretty negative, I guess while I'm here, let me show you the Kinsect too. So you can see I'm using uh, uh, Vezerstag 3 fours. I can't pronounce that. Um, 19 power, 7 speed, and we've got Dragon uh, on, the, on the Glaive itself. Uh, this is one of these slow Kinsects I was talking about that are used for the drill attacks. If you find that the slow Kinsect makes it too unbearable to get uh, the extracts, don't worry too much. You can run a speed Kinsect instead, uh, one with lots of speed. And all that will happen is that every time you pogo stick, instead of getting like two or three 105s um, like we were getting, you, you'll probably get like one or maybe two. Um, it's, it's, it doesn't make a huge, huge difference. It, can't, the, it does build up over the course of a run to make a difference, but it's, it's not super essential. So don't worry. Uh, I would definitely prioritize uh, convenience in terms of using speed Kinsects if you aren't comfortable with the slow one. Uh, the weapon itself has an affinity augment on it because it's a uh, Fatalis. Fatalis has a lot of negative base affinity. That's minus 20 with the affinity augment. So that's the reason you'll see me running so much uh, Critical Eye and, and Agitator Plus and, and Weakness Expert because it's a Fatalis dual blade set. But obviously if you're running 3 Safi, 2 Agi, uh, 2 Raging Brachy or whatever, it's really not a huge deal. Just get yourself to 100 affinity. Uh, so first of all, get yourself the, the key skills. Get yourself Claw Boost, uh, maybe a Point of Evade Extender. Don't forget Heavy Artillery on your uh, Temporal Mantle and spare a 2 slot for Airborne. Uh, and then other than that, just get your DPS skills. So make sure you've got three crit boost. Try to get to 100 affinity, however you can. And then with the remaining points, you know, stack attack and uh, peak performance and other DPS skills. Uh, very typical set building. Hopefully this has clarified and answered all the questions that you may have. Again, the priority for the video is showing you all of the openings and stuff. That's the most important thing. And I think I did that fairly well. But uh, if you have any questions, please do ask away. You'll notice that I didn't get as many cons as I would have liked, especially compared to my other videos. I didn't get very good RNG. This wasn't a very good run. I've actually done better than this off stream. But uh, in my improved runs, I get like an absolute ton of cons. Um, and like, I feel like the video, it was, I, I started recording with that video, but it wasn't as useful. I, I wasn't able to show you as many interesting things. 
So hopefully this has been uh, sort of illuminating. Hopefully this will help you with your insect glaive runs. Um, and otherwise, yeah, I don't really have anything else to say. Take it easy. Bye-bye.